but I encourage you all to add a variety of different skin tones so that everyone can be represented in your game. Diversity is really important. everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a game that was requested by 12pixie, an icon creator game. This game has been highly requested, it's a really popular type of game to make, and I'm super excited to show you all how to do it. Now some of you may not know what an icon creator is, so let me just show you. I already have my milkshake here. I am ready to go start coding. And I had to go back to Stan's Donuts to get another one because the milkshake was so good. I don't know if you saw my last video where I was roller skating with a milkshake and I dropped it. But this time, I did not drop it. And it is delicious. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure that you click on the link down in the description so you can go watch it. So here we are in my kind of pre-example project for this game, an icon creator. Basically, you get to change the different parts of your character to create one that looks like you. So I have different styles of eyes, different styles of mouths, different colors of shirts, there's different hair, and there's all kinds of things that you can change. And then there's buttons on the sides that you can use to change them. Now, you do not have to be an artsy person to do this. I am terrible at drawing. I am in no way, shape, or form in any way possible good at drawing. So I licensed some things from Adobe Stock, and you can use them too. This is kind of a blank template for an icon creator. So if you take these sprites and costumes into your backpack, then you can follow along with the coding without actually having to draw anything because I cannot draw anything. So if we look in the code, all of these are empty right now. So there's two parts to an icon creator. There's the art part, which we are not doing, <laughs> or at least I'm not doing. And then there's the buttons part. Now let's talk about the art. So as you can see here, there are different pieces of things that you can change. And they all started with this character sprite. Now this one doesn't do anything. It's always hidden, but I just have it here for an example. There are a lot of different characters that I started out with, and I took individual pieces of each one and put them in this game so you can mix and match all of these different characters to make someone who would look like this. To separate those out, basically, I'll just take the different pieces. Like, for example, if I wanted to make some eyes, then I would duplicate this character sprite and then take everything except the eyes and delete it. Make sure the eyes are at the same spot as everything else so they line up with everything. If you were making your own art, you would make all of your different characters and then separate them out into these individual pieces. Make sure you always keep a backup of all of the fully completed people so that if you ever delete something by accident, you'll still have something to, that you can take it from. Now let's get into the coding. There are three things that each of the parts of your character should have. First, at the start, they should set their size. Right now, all of my things are set, should be set to size 50. So let's get when start clicked and set the size to 150. And when the buttons are clicked, they're gonna receive a message that makes them change what they look like. So let's create a new message called skin since this is the skin color that they're changing. And when they receive the skin message, they change to the next costume. So when we click on this code, it's gonna change to the three different colors of skin that I have. Now, a really important thing in an icon creator is to be able to represent diversity. So right now I only have three skin tones because for, for the simplicity of this tutorial, but I encourage you all to add a variety of different skin tones so that everyone can be represented in your game. Diversity is really important. One of the ways that I made my game inclusive to others 
is I have an accessories sprite where I have hair clips and glasses, but I also have a hijab. So get creative and see what kinds of things you can add to your game to make it inclusive to everyone. There's one more thing that you need to add. When, when you click the done button, all of these buttons are going to disappear and your character is going to become larger so you can take a picture of it and save it for later. So when you receive the done message, let's create a new message called done, it should set the size to 250 instead. And depending on the size of your art, you can change this up, but make sure that the X and Y coordinates and the size are the same for all of your different pieces. And even though their X and Y coordinates are the same, they can be in different spots in the actual character editor. So right now, the eyes are in kind of the middle close to the origin, but the mouth is lower down because in relation to the eyes, the mouth isn't going to be lower down than the eyes are, but they should all be at the exact same X and Y coordinates. So, so far in the skin, we have set size to 150, set it to 250, and when they receive this message, change it to the next costume. Now let's make the button actually trigger this. So in the skin, when this sprite, when start is clicked, it should show. And we need to make sure that it shows at the beginning because when the done button is clicked and all the buttons hide, it's gonna hide. And at the beginning it has to show. So that just keeps it from glitching. Then when it receives done, hide. And when the sprite is clicked, broadcast the skin message. So let's test this out. At the start, it's showing. And I have a little music playing. That's the only thing that I have is some music. But let's disconnect that for a while so it doesn't play every time. So we click on the skin button. It's going to change the skin. So you should repeat this process for all of the other things. For example, let's do the eyes at start. Set size to 150, and then set size to 250. When they receive done, and when they receive new message called eyes, go to the next costume. So these three sprites should be in every part of your character. And this, and even though I only have the skin, hair, eyes, mouth, accessories, shirt, background color, and background style, you can add it for other things like something that can be in their hand, you can change their outfit, you can change a lot of different things. So get creative in all the different things that you add to your character. For example, someone commented and asked, why can't you change the color of the hair? And that's not something that I had in my game, but I encourage you to add all of the things that you would want in your game. It's kind of just because I didn't have the space for all those buttons, but get creative and see what you can do. Now let's make the eyes button trigger that. So when the sprite is clicked, broadcast, eyes. When start clicked, show, and hide when you receive done. And there are certain things that you're going to want to be in the front at all times. So something extra that you can add is when this start when start is clicked, then go to the front. Some things it doesn't really matter, but for the hair fronts, you want those to always be in the front. And for the hair backs, you also always want those to be in the backs. So now let's make sure that we have all of these different things in each sprite just by duplicating. So you can drag each thing into every other sprite. Now the shirt only has one costume, so we're not gonna use the next costume block, we're actually going to use the change color effect by 25 
So we can change the color of the shirt because the style is not going to change. So when we test that out, it's just going to change the color of the shirt. We're going to do the same thing for the backdrops. So when I receive backdrop color, then change the color effect by 25. But when I receive backdrop style, then we'll have it change to the next backdrop. And I have three different styles of backdrop here. I have stripes, polka dots, and plain. So when it changes the style, it'll change like that. And then when it changes the color, it'll change like that. Make sure that when you're duplicating, you always change the things so that they're unique to their own parts. So for example, with the mouth, when I duplicate it, it automatically had eyes in there, but we have to create a new message that's called mouth so that we don't have any glitches. Let's go ahead and start duplicating things for the hair. Make sure that you don't do anything with the hair backs one yet though because that one has a special type of code to make it sync up with the hair fronts. Now that you've duplicated everything, go through and make sure that when it's clicked, it's sending the right message. Okay, now that we have all of the code for the buttons and the character parts done, let's test it out. So we can change the skin. We can only change the hair fronts. We can change the eyes, the mouth, the accessories, background style, background color, and shirt. But there's a little bit of an error for when the shirt is in the front. The shirt should actually be in the back. So let's make sure that the shirt goes to the back at the beginning. Now let's make it so that the hair backs will sync up with the hair fronts. For this one, when start clicked, we're going to need a forever loop. And the forever loop needs to sync. So the hair backs needs to sync up with the hair fronts. Most of the hair fronts don't need a back, but there are some like the red pigtails that need the red pigtails to be behind it right here, or the Afro puffs that need the curly hair front right here. Most of my things are just called characters one, two, three, or four, but the ones that need certain hair backs have special names like a full long blonde hair or straight bob or red pigtails or afro puffs. Now I am going to use that special naming to make them sync up. So let's get an if else. First go to operators and get apple contains a, then go to sensing and get backdrop number of stage and we're going to change this to hair fronts and then costume name so if costume name of hair fronts contains characters then we want it to change to a blank cost a blank costume so we have a blank costume here called no back so we'll have it change to costume no back and if it doesn't contain the word characters, which means it has a special name like curly long, straight bob, red pigtails, or afro puffs or something like that, then we'll have it switch its costume to the costume name of hair fronts. And at the beginning, we will have it switch its costume to no back. And at the beginning, we'll have the hair fronts switch their costume to one that does not require a hair back and it doesn't matter which one. 
We'll also make it so that the accessories hide at the beginning in case they don't want any accessories. In our accessories sprite, there is also a blank one where there are no accessories, just called costume one. So at the beginning, we will have it switch to costume one. Now let's try out our hair synchronization. Okay, so it's switching to the right hair back for the hair front and the ones that don't need a back don't have one. But as you can see, the back of the hair is coming a little bit in front of the shirt. So in that forever loop, let's also make sure that it always goes to the back layer. There we go. Now everything is in order. So if I wanted to make my character, I would use this skin tone, those Afro puffs, those eyes, and let's do like a blue shirt. There we go. So when I click done, it's making my character bigger so I can save it, but we are missing the costume sizing thing in our hair back since we saved that for last. So make sure that you always test your thing out for errors. And in this case, all we have to do to fix it is get when start clicked, set size to 150, which is what it's gonna be like in the editor. And then set size to 250 when you receive done. And if we click on that, then the Afro puffs are exactly the right size. And then when we click on the start, it goes back to the normal size. All right, you are all done. You did it. You made an icon creator. I'm so proud of you. Great job. If you ever follow one of my tutorials, just go to the Tutorials and Help Center link down in the description and comment a link to your project so I can check it out, give it a love and a favorite, and add it to the studio. In the Tutorials and Help Center studio, you can get your project in the studio, you can become a featured coder, answer some fun questions of the week, and get help with your projects. Just follow it, follow the studio in the link down in the description, comment and say hi, I'll say hi back. And yeah, I can't wait to see you and all of your projects. Make sure that you like and subscribe and thank you so much for watching. Bye!